Um, firstly, thank you to you, Justine and Cole, and the EMB team for inviting us down for the session. Um, when you said you had uh, that many registrations, I thought, it's not weird, but look at it, the room is actually really cool. Um, and I love the health and safety talk. We, we never hear about that quite in It's good to know what to do. <clears throat> so when I was thinking about how I'd open up um, our session, um, it just sort of came to me about you know, social and sustainable procurement. It's kind of this new thing that's arrived in everybody's uh, doorstep, especially procurement people. Um, when I say new, it's been around for a few years, but it didn't really have any definition around it for New Zealand, people who don't go overseas. So I thought, it, it is like a stranger coming to town. And I just Google that, and this part came up, it's like, oh, it's <laughs> um, And I remember feeling that way uh, when I first took over the Auckland Council procurement team about three years ago. The outgoing uh, general manager was giving me a handover. Uh, and the last part of, of Sarah's handover was, oh, and by the way, there's this thing called social procurement, um, and the politicians are quite keen on it, so uh, you should do something about it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, what does it mean? What is social? Um, is it a social enterprise? Is it just not for profits? Because that's how it's seen at the beginning. Um, there was no clear definition, and there's a whole lot of um, activity that's kind of being done by corporates, etc., which, on the face of it, kind of just look like marketing. Is it a little bit of a gimmick? Are we just spending a little bit of money with a social enterprise to make us feel good, and then we can put it on our brochures and tell the whole world that the actual effect of it is negligible? So, we had to think about, what does it have to do with real procurement? And I think that's something that uh, is important. And as Justine said, how do we actually turn policy discussion into effective implementation? Um, one of the real uh, issues around how do you make it real for procurement is we have some real, uh, we have drivers like cost out savings, etc. How do you reconcile that with the drivers around social and sustainable procurement, which are quite different? So anyway, lots of questions um, for a few answers, and even fewer experts who can actually literally articulate what it is that we were trying to achieve. So, a cute animal picture to start off with that. Um, there's a buzz, everyone's doing it. Uh, there's networks, there's uh, sustainable business councils, it's trending. But in action, it's more difficult. Uh, I just made a note for myself. <clears throat> when the outgoing general manager had mentioned it to me, what happened literally when I stepped in in June was we had a large procurement initiative going through um, the council at the time. It was a big uh, stormwater uh, procurement exercise. It was about $30 million spent, so a big CapEx project. And we had tried to put in sustainable outcomes into the procurement plan. And at Auckland Council, we need that procurement plan if it's above a certain delegation to be signed up by the politicians. Everyone expected, because we talked about it, that we'd take it up to the committee and we'll just get a seal of approval and we'd all move on. Uh, normally the GM of procurement is the lead officer for that committee, so we'd sit up the front. It was not the meeting I was at, it was the, the meeting just, uh, just before, should I say, I took over. And um, the committee rejected the procurement plan. It sent everybody in a password. Because they said, explain to us how this is not going to cost us any money. Mm -hmm. And 
and the people who attended the human plate up could not do that effectively. And so it basically was a real oh shit moment uh, at our organization, which was we haven't got our ducks in a row. We kind of went up there and thought we were going to get this because it's all feel good factor, etc. etc. But when the hard question came, nobody could answer it. Um, so we needed to learn how to not just sell the idea around social and sustainable procurement, but to sell the idea around getting multiple outcomes for spending our money without it necessarily costing us more. And if it was going to cost us more, how do we explain the way that benefits uh, the broader Auckland, uh, in our case, Auckland economy, uh, and achieves our Auckland plan outcomes without uh, you know, becoming a burden on the ratepayer as such. So we needed to build up our knowledge, and we needed to do it fast. Um, I actually got, so we had lots of meetings with lots of people in the organization, and I got sick of people saying to me, you need to leverage the buying power of procurement. Leverage? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Explain it, tell me what that means. Um, and Frey and Aaron were there, in those sessions because these guys have been helping us put together our sustainable procurement framework and then the actual guidelines came up to it. And they heard my frustration. And the real key thing was, how if, if I can't understand it, what are we trying to achieve, how are we going to explain it to our internal customer? The people who are going to be spending the money who come to us, procurement uh, professionals for advice, so what is it that you're trying to tell us to do? Because at that time it felt like Procurements, <coughs> these business customers, you need to do something other than just review your contract, go and get that bill of capping stuff or whatever. Um, so really it became about doability and measurability. How all things start um, in government agencies. We needed to get our policy right. So um, the first thing for us to do was to make sure we had the buy-in from not just our internal council organization, but from our council control organizations. So for those of you who don't know, Auckland Council has uh, council control organizations uh, such as Auckland Transport and Watercare. And between the group, we'll be spending about $4 billion a year uh, for CapEx and OpEx uh, activity. Auckland Council actually becomes a uh, middle cousin in about year two of our long-term plan. So I think next year, Auckland Transport will be spending more money than Auckland Council. So we'll be down to about 1.1. We'll be at about 1.1 1 .1 billion. Auckland Transport will be up to about 1.4 billion. So we needed to make sure that we were all on the same page. So we pushed through a group uh, procurement policy, and you see that principle three is be sustainable. These should look very familiar because they're very similar to um, government procurement principles as well. And um, that's no coincidence. Um, then from here, we developed our sustainable procurement framework. And we've got copies that I think Cole will distribute after the session yeah. that we can send to you. So that's both a copy of our policy and a copy of our sustainable procurement framework. So you can have a look. Again, not <laughs> similar to what you're seeing out of your broader outcomes um, discussions that are coming from central government policy. So we know that sustainable procurement is important to our uh, yeah, especially in Auckland as well. And we've got our policy and our framework, so we've got the what and why. So now the how. And this is the really um, crucial bit, important bit, and that's why we've got um, Frey here, who um, isn't just talking about sustainable procurement, but is at the leading edge of it, doing it, learning from it, and then teaching us all in our organisation on how to do it better. So I'll pass it to Kia ora koutou. Oh, I don't know if that's 
My name is Frey, I'm from the Southern Initiative, um, which is um, a priority area for Auckland Council. So South Auckland um, obviously hasn't um, fared as well from the economic boom um, as the rest of Auckland, so the council has made it a priority. So we are, um, I like to call us a bit of a special department. Um, we have a unique focus in that we try innovative ways to solve social and economic problems. Um, we have a mandate to fail fast, um, to try different things um, and test what works and doesn't work. Um, we also are a little bit unique in the sense that we're not just rates funded. We actually have the Māori and Pacifica Trades Training Programme um, for South Auckland and uh, we also have some um, philanthropic um, donations and contributions to some of the work and programs that we operate. So um, I get a little bit sick of seeing the definition of social procurement or sustainable procurement and, and talking about it, but I, I kind of think it's really important to um, make a differentiator to start off with in terms of what we are trying to achieve and that social procurement isn't just purchasing social things or services. Um, we have a great ally and friend in Dr. Ingrid Burkett in Australia um, and she says social procurement is a, a more entrepreneurial and sustainable approach to addressing inequities and building pathways out of poverty and unemployment. I think that's really fitting um, and helps to really describe what we are trying to achieve um, for the South and gives us a really clear direction when we're trying to talk about tangible outcomes. Um, and that's a really important thing to talk about. Um, Jazz has kind of mentioned that you know, there's a lot of policy and there's a lot of um, talk about what to do and then it is the actual transferring <coughs> that into um, the meaningful impact that we're trying to have that can sometimes be the difficult part. So what's our role? Uh, the Southern Initiative um, to date have predominantly been supporting our council family to take social procurement. Um, we are involved at early planning meetings to understand the project and coordinate um, the different socioeconomic outcomes. And by doing that, we need to understand the conditions um, that the contract will be operating in, the industry, and get some real insights. Um, we do a lot of research. Um, it's really important to be specific about what we're trying to achieve. So what works for a major CapEx stormwater project won't necessarily then work for a um, Auckland transport roading project. So we make sure we're being really um, careful about what we're trying to do. We then um, decide on um, the tender of questions and all the collateral that goes with those questions. Um, we also draft up KPIs for the draft contract um, to go out with the tender. And then during the actual tender process, we um, try to separate our kind of demand and supply side. So whoever's been drafting the contract, someone else will be separate who will then support the tenderers. So if the tenderers have questions around those KPIs, um, they can get support from someone within the Southern Initiative about how they should respond um, and where they can go for other support. Um, we also have um, provided subject matter expertise on evaluation panels. So often if we're the ones who are writing the questions and KPIs, it helps to be in um, as part of the evaluation uh, to provide that support to the rest of the team. Um, and then once the contract is actually awarded, we su provide support to the main contractor um, to be able to deliver those KPIs. Um, and we also play a key kind of brokerage role um, between them and any um, suppliers or new recruits that they may have through us. 
um, as well as a, a coaching and Menaki um, approach for as long as required. So I guess it's kind of a good point to kind of caveat that we are um, continually adopting and evolving our practice. We are really learning by doing um, and we do have a lot of international best, best practice to follow. Um, we're, we're not the first, unfortunately. I, I always want New Zealand to be up there, but we're really not um, when it comes to social procurement. So we do have a lot to, to follow um, in terms of what steps. Um, we also do um, a lot of research up front to make sure that we are using the appropriate tactics for the contracts. Um, and we've kind of learnt that um, the sooner you start doing that and are engaged in our procurement process, the better. It's kind of that um, old saying about procurement, you know, if we're not involved at the planning stages, it's really hard for us to have an impact and provide that strategic advice. It's the same around social procurement. If we're not in there with the business case at that point, a lot of the time, by the time it comes to, and it's too late. So trying to get in there and be in the air of the, those project teams really early on and be at that table is really key. Um, we also find that it's really helpful if you're engaging um, end users and potential suppliers up front in the process when you're starting to look at those potential outcomes that you can achieve. Um, it's really helpful to get their input uh, because often, um, particularly as um, you know, a local, local government organisation, we think we know what's best uh, for our communities, but um, particularly in our massive um, area of Auckland, there is real disparate um, population groups and real different drivers, so it's really important to think local when you're coming for some of these outcomes as well. And I think the, the biggest learning is that um, there is no one-size-fits-all approach. Uh, if everyone wants a silver bullet, it doesn't exist. You have to be um, tactile of what you're doing and uh, be able to adapt um, each project. So to give you a bit of an idea of what we've done to date, um, Amity is the, um, the Eastern Busway project that Auckland Transport um, have just awarded and the contract starts um, next month, April. So um, as part of this project, Auckland Transport asked for specific social outcomes and had a waiting um, inside of their evaluation on social outcomes. Um, it was big enough to actually make a difference in the overall um, standings of the suppliers, so that's the kind of um, key um, factor for us, is making sure that waiting has meaning too, it's not paying lip service. So we believe this is a New Zealand first for setting specific KPIs for both targeted employment and supplier diversity. Um, the targeted uh, recruitment KPI is intended to increase the number of new entrants that will be employed as a result of the contract. Um, these new entrants have to be from target groups uh, and we've identified those target groups based on where this project is. Um, so it has to be from the local board areas there who have suffered the most uh, um, depravity as well as uh, Māori and Pacifica and women um, as well as um, minority groups. So there's a specific help sheet for them that uh, for the tenderers that outlines what that looks like. Um, the KPI itself requires one new entrant per five mil of contract spend. Um, this is based on the North and Island approach. It's a tried and tested approach that we've um, learned from in terms of overseas examples. We have allowed a little bit of a um, room, a wiggle room in this KPI because we want it to be achievable. So theirs is actually one of three mil. Um, however, we don't have a good sense of the actual number of people that would be required for this job. So we have allowed a little bit of flux. The main contractor has said that they aim to exceed this. So they intend to have over 35 new recruits um, as part of this contract. So that's really exciting to see. There's also a wage strategy as part of this, which is linked to um, productivity gains, which is the professional development piece. So um, 
we have a starting rate of $20.50 for every new entrant. Um, they have to move up to $25 within the first year and $27.50 by the end of the second year. Um, those productivity gains are linked to their professional development around um, literacy, numeracy, um, gaining industry qualifications or starting apprenticeships, um, driver licensing, and also um, a um, green skills qualification that the industry can set. Um, so recognizing that that's a future in the construction industry. Um, the last one is the supplier diversity KPI. So this KPI is about the value of subcontracts um, with Māori, Pacifica and or socially innovative businesses. Cool. Um, and as part of this, um, they um, have to have um, at least 5% of their um, subcontracts have to be with those businesses. Um, the contractor has said that they would exceed this, so they're looking at 11%. So that's really exciting for us um, in terms of setting a, a standard for the rest of New Zealand, which is really cool to see. So a little bit more about um, supplier diversity. Um, the Southern Initiative has set up Hewaka e Kanoa. Um, the name is taken from a famous Māori whakatauki, um, which translates as the canoe which we are all in without exception. It refers to acting as a collective, working in unity and learning, uh, and leaving no one behind, sorry. Um, and so the aim of Hewaki Kinoa is to connect Māori and Pacifica businesses with um, public sector um, clients as well as um, large corporate buyers. Um, so at the moment, um, it was primarily set up to serve the Auckland Council family, so ourselves as well as Auckland Transport and also City Rail Link was a, a big starting point. Um, the intention is that we want to increase the capability and scale of Māori and Pacifica enterprises in um, our supply chains. We've realised that an intentionally growing enterprise and entrepreneurship amongst Indigenous businesses, women and minority population groups uh, in procurement is a proven step strategy for improving economic development. We firmly believe that Māori and Pacifica businesses are an untapped pathway for socio-economic transformation for our Māori and Pacifica peoples. So although at the moment it is primarily Auckland focused, the intention is that it will spin out to be a national body and that it will sit outside of the Southern Initiative. Um, We're currently seeking funding to make this happen in the next year because we're getting a lot of demand um, in terms of the rest of um, the country asking for a list of Māori and Pacifica businesses. So if we're starting to create these clauses, we've realised there is a need to facilitate that. Um, as part of what WEN does, we look to build not only the capability and capacity of Māori and Pacifica businesses, so breaking down some barriers for them in terms of giving them advice around tendering, um, around pricing, around complicated government registration forms <laughs> um, and giving them all of that advice. We also look to build the capability and capacity of our clients and buyers. We recognise that supplier diversity is new to New Zealand and that there is a need for us to be able to provide advice on what good supplier diversity strategies look like. Um, and we are actually having a workshop next week in Auckland um, Murray Saylor from Australia, um, who is going to be focusing on um, teaching everyone how to implement a supply diversity strategy. So it's a bit of a both sides of the coin in terms of realising that um, we need to build both ends of the market in terms of supply diversity. But just to give you a little bit of an idea of the type of businesses, um, one in five Māori owned businesses are actually in the construction sector in general across New Zealand. Um, so for us it was a natural uh, step to focus on civils and infrastructure and construction to start off with. It's also where Auckland's pipeline is at the moment. Our spend is all going into big um, CapEx projects. So for us we wanted to make sure that we were um, 
having demand opportunities for these businesses as well for them to want to join. Um, currently, of the 55 businesses, they, um, sorry, it's increased to 55, it changes every day. Um, they currently employ 857 staff. 80% um, of those staff are Māori and Pacifica. Um, and we've realised with um, a lot of this um, construction infrastructure, there's a real need for a lot of the ancillary services. So um, we have a business who does drone surveying. We have a insurance brokerage organisation. Um, we have a lot of comms support as well. Um, and we also have some um, specialist um, advice, specialists in terms of even procurement advice to provide that tender and support as well. Um, the key thing with um, Hewaki Ekenoa is that in order to be successful for, um, in order for it to be successful, we need more support from um, the rest of the country, I guess, in terms of undertaking supplier diversity. Um, and for that national body to grow, we need others to start mandating for supply diversity in their supply chains. Um, there are a range of tactics that can be implemented. It doesn't have to just be a percentage. Um, you can look at um, set asides or um, putting in a percentage on terms of in a panel, having one Māori Pacifica owned business on a panel. Um, and we've realised that actually there's no one way. So it's more a case of starting somewhere. Lastly, I just wanted to let you know about our conference that we will be having on the 14th of May. Um, this year it's also focused on supplier diversity. Um, last year was our first conference and it was really about setting the scene around sustainable and social procurement. Um, this year our international speakers from Canada and Australia um, are from the different um, supply nation organisations who undertake supplier diversity and have mandates in their country so they already have legislation and regula regulation which makes them um, procure from indigenous businesses so they will be sharing their learnings um, and providing advice around how we can do it better and faster um, and so I just wanted to yeah let you know about that and hopefully that some of you will be able to attend um, last year it did sell out and we kind of um, already got a lot of interest this year so if you want to know more just come and see me afterwards Thank you. Nice Thank you. <laughs>